come here and let's hear more about all these wonderful missions who makes rocket science look really as easy as rocket science. Come. Nandini's daughter is with us here as well, and I just want to tell you all who uh, think that maths and science uh, are difficult subjects for girls, she just scored 100% in maths in class 12, and she's in her first year of medicine. So, congratulations. <laughs> and we promised to mention the other daughter as well, otherwise she's going to yeah, give you hell at home. Be, yeah. So, Nandini will speak a little, and then we'll get, in, get yeah. into a Q&A. Great. Uh, good morning to everyone, and uh, I thank you for uh, giving me an opportunity to speak. I must confess that I'm more comfortable making technical presentations, you know, rather than speaking on this topic, but then, uh, nevertheless, um, uh, I'm uh, working in ISRO Satellite Center. We basically make satellites. We design and develop satellites, and uh, they are sent to Sri Harikota, which is our launch pad for, uh, uh, for the launch. Um, uh, I just thought I'll give you a small uh, uh, presentation on what I think on today's topic. Um, could I start the presentation? So, um, uh, before I begin, uh, I was just a little worried when I saw the topic yesterday, <laughs> you know, that uh, women are from Mars, and, you know, why it got me worried was that uh, we are envisaging a mission to Venus, you know, very soon, and then it's like, when I saw that we, uh, uh, men are from Venus, I was just wondering whether we would play a role, and obviously we all want to be a part of the Venus team, too. <laughs> If you have such glitches at ISRO, the rockets will never take off. <laughs> Uh, so I, I wish to begin my statement by paying obeisance to a work of a woman more than a century ago. Uh, I would like to invoke Mary Curie, famous for radioactivity, who won the Nobel Prize in 1903. Records show that it was not an easy entry, even for her, even to the Nobel nominations. But asserting herself, the immortal Curie won a second Nobel Prize in chemistry in 1911, the only person to win two Nobel Prizes in two different subjects, physics and chemistry. So past history does show that women struggled for recognition. Uh, but I'm fortunate to live in, a, in better times. Uh, I would just try to, you know, take a leaf out of the Mars orbiter trajectory. Um, what you see here, um, um, maybe, uh, I don't know if it could be projected. Okay, yeah, it is there. Um, so um, uh, the Mars orbiter mission trajectory, did, it did the, the satellite did a number of revolutions around the Earth uh, uh, before, and it had to escape from the sphere of influence of the Earth um, to go into a trajectory around the sun to reach the Mars. So I think women uh, must have that, you know, you know, there's a lot of similarity. Women should have that little extra energy or the escape velocity that we call uh, to, and they need to design their own trajectory to, you know, to reach their goals. So, um, coming to ISRO, where I work, um, um, I just give you a, a larger picture of how the women are placed here in ISRO. Um, we have about 24% of women in the technical areas, and uh, there are about 20% who are designated, I mean, who have important positions. They're project managers, deputy project directors, and 
project directors. Uh, but then you would be wondering why, I mean, 20% is still a small number. Uh, I had my own theory, I mean, this is my personal opinion about why it is only 20%. Uh, so these are the women who actually, the people in the top positions are people who joined, you know, started their careers way back in the 1980s. I think back then there weren't that many women joining service. And uh, so uh, today there are far more women who are joining uh, and the ratio is a lot better. So, so in the coming few years, there are going to be a lot more women in the top, or in the top positions. So uh, now what do we do and what is my desire for change? Um, so uh, this is again, you know, few things that I thought uh, uh, are important. Um, one is the uh, perception or the mindset as we call. Um, society is plagued with a cultural myth that girls are inherently uncomfortable with computing, maths and science. But my take on this is that it's not true. We need to change this particular mindset. And then another study that I found on the net revealed that men are promoted on potential and women on past accomplishments. I think this is another mindset that we need to change. And so what it means is whatever women do, they must do twice as well as men to be thought half as good. Luckily, that's not difficult. So, um, uh, so, so that's the first point. The next point is about the respect and security. I think women to exploit her full potential, the safety and security is most essential because she needs to pursue her career in all the seriousness. So she can't be worrying about security and other issues. And the third thing is to acknowledge her identity. Would you want to appreciate a woman as a woman and a scientist? It's usually one or the other, but I think it should be both. So um, now coming to um, other things like you know providing amenities at workplace, these are at the secondary level. After all, women is a multitasker who manages household activity and her family. So uh, it is important to provide a lot of amenities to make it more comfortable for her at the workplace. And another important thing that needs to be done is about counseling and mentoring. So, um, so this, in, this is required because uh, 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 the woman herself should, you know, nurture the ambition to succeed. So she should not be the type who could just give it up whenever there's a problem. So uh, she should be counseled. And I have heard that, you know, the, the lot of people with doctorates, but they don't pursue serious research. And um, so this is something that needs to be changed. At a four, more fundamental level, I think we need to educate the girl child, bring her to the mainstream and expose her to opportunity. Equal opportunity should not remain a myth. I am one person who doesn't believe that women should ask for any concessions or any, you know, uh, um, uh, kind of reservations, especially at the workplace. And it's only then she would be respected, you know, she would be respected if she is what, if she doesn't ask for any such uh, uh, concessions. Uh, in the end, I would say that there's no one size that fits it all. Let's just not make it a mere number game. Let's not make it a race between the two genders. If we don't look at half the world's human resource, we don't know if a Marie Curie is hiding somewhere. Thank you. Uh, Nandini, I wanted to talk about stereotypes because uh, this whole uh, event is dedicated to breaking stereotypes. Uh, do you often get that question? You're a rocket scientist in a sari from India. 
Um, yeah, that's true. I think it's not uh, very common to see women uh, scientists, and um, uh, we, at, especially at ISRO, are very conservative about our way of dressing, and uh, you generally find people in saris. So uh, this, I think uh, there is this uh, perception of about being a rocket scientist, and people say, oh, we are actually seeing a rocket scientist in flesh and, flesh and blood. Um, so um, uh, uh, it, has, it does happen very often, uh, but people are impressed, and uh, many times I feel happy, you know, to be recognized as one. But it's not all happy. I mean, it is a great struggle as well. The Nobel laureate, as you know, Tim Hunt, made that statement that three things happen when women are in the lab with them. You fall in love with them, they fall in love with you, and when you criticize them, they cry. Is, has that ever happened to you, or have you seen it happen? Yeah, I think uh, women are emotionally different uh, from men. So they are yeah. from Venus? Uh, no, I don't believe so, because uh, um, especially in Israel, you know, uh, coming... Uh, I mean, going by my experiences, um, I think I've had it easy, and uh, uh, I don't, I, or I didn't see any kind of discrimination as such in ISRO where I work. Um, I think it's mostly because uh, uh, people are so much uh, uh, into the technical aspects that many times uh, you forget that you are a woman when you're working in a team. Um, so it hardly makes a difference that uh, you're working, I mean, if you're working with a man or a woman. So um, in a lab coat, everyone looks the same. Yeah, <laughs> and um, uh, uh, I think what eventually matters is how good you are at work. And um, women especially should not, like I said, uh, expect any kind of uh, concessions, you know, just because they're a woman. And I think that way the organization needs to play a role, you know, support her so that uh, she's, uh, her needs are taken care of. But that is you know, perhaps you're lucky. There are a lot of women who've had to make a choice, not just in science, but in other careers, uh, especially when it comes to parenthood. And if they don't make that choice, if they do both work and home, there's always that guilt trip. So how did you overcome that? Um, uh, uh, yeah, it has been difficult, but, you know, I've always enjoyed motherhood uh, as, as much as I've enjoyed working uh, at my workplace. And, um, uh, you know, uh, it's always uh, fun to spend time with children, cook for them. And um, uh, so uh, I've had uh, my uh, times when, uh, you know, there are demanding times at home, and, uh, uh, and there are demanding times at office as well. Um, so I think you need to take a call. Uh, like, you know, you have uh, situations where and uh, whenever you have an event, maybe, and uh, you call in for additional forces and then you have to, you know, supplement your resources. So whenever you are on a mission and uh, we have a launch and then I do take the help of my parents, my in-laws, and my family has been very supportive. So um, uh, I think we need to make uh, some adjustments somewhere, and, and we need to manage time very well. Indra Nui recently said that no matter how successful she was, uh, her children would still regard her as a bad mother because she was not present at so many of their big events in life. Um, you know, perhaps you're lucky, but have you seen around you women in positions where they've just had to give up? their careers because they just couldn't manage? Yeah, um, I, I have come across, uh, in fact, I was reading uh, about a survey in the internet where it said that 70% uh, uh, of the women passing out from Indian Institute of Management don't pursue a career. Yes. Um, so uh, that is, you know, a, a, a real waste of resources. <laughs> uh, uh, I think that is something we should change. And uh, how uh, can we change that? Is it up to women? I mean, if more women like you are in leadership positions, what is the kind of change that they can bring about? 
I think it's more about changing the mindset. You know, women needs to understand that you know she needs to have an identity, and uh, she 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 should be able to manage her career. I mean, the family is not just her responsibility, uh, so the responsibility should be divided, uh, and it could be if it is shared, then it is very beneficial. So um, uh, it's all about changing the mindset of the mindset of the society. How can men help? Yeah, I think um, men, I, the, I mean, man is the best person to answer the question. <laughs> um, uh, um, yeah, men in the sense that, you know, uh, they need to understand, especially in my case, uh, my husband works in the same organization as I do. So uh, when I'm away on, for long hours, and he, do, he does understand that I have a mission and I need to stay at work, because he actually follows uh, what's happening at work. So uh, I think uh, even if you know, the husband or the man is, uh, it could be, it need not be the husband alone. It can be the father or it can be a brother. Uh, um, uh, they need to, you know, support uh, uh, the women in the family. Uh, otherwise, it, uh, it is just not a woman's responsibility alone. And I think the last question that I think most mothers here would want to ask you as well, how do we get more girls into science and maths? Because there is this fear that they seem to have that, you know, or the stereotype, which I'm happy that your daughter is broken, that women are just no good at maths. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, children should be encouraged, especially the girl children, they should be told, if, if they have a liking towards in maths and science, they should be encouraged. And uh, basically at school level and at college level, um, uh, they should be encouraged to take up uh, science and uh, uh, more technical subjects and uh, um, um, probably engineering. I don't see that many uh, uh, girl students getting into IIT these days. Uh, that's possibly again something to do with the mindset you know they're sort of they've decided that you know this is not my cup of tea so uh, is it because it's uh, a lot of hard work they know that there's a lo um, for instance medicine it's a long haul yeah uh, is it because of that I don't think uh, I don't think women are worried about hard work. Um, it is just that they need the confidence that uh, uh, they should be able to do it, and they need a supporting family. And uh, uh, with that, I think uh, there will be nothing to stop them. And lastly, I just wanted to ask you that question. I think everyone all over the world saw that picture of women in saris celebrating when uh, the Mars mission was launched. And I think the whole world stood, uh, stood up and took notice. And you had a very interesting story to relate about that, that actually those were not the scientists. Uh, yeah, you know, there were a lot of people who worked very hard for the Mars mission, and we had people, uh, you know, in the transport, canteen, the reception, a lot of supporting staff who worked day and night, and uh, we were um, inside the control center. Wearing and salvar yeah, and lab coats. Yeah, and we had uh, stayed up for more than 24 hours, and we had, like, all uh, dark circles in the eyes and we hadn't washed our faces and combed our hair and we were just worried about you know whether it's going to be plan A or plan B we had so many you know and we were looking at the telemetry wondering what would to do next and so um, uh, yeah they uh, I think uh, uh, basically you know people like the fact that the, there are people uh, uh, working with uh, Kanji Varun Saris and uh, Jasmine with Klaas with Gajra yeah, in the head, yeah. jewelry uh, in Israel so, yeah, there are women, and uh, we do, normally we don't dress like that, but, uh, but when there are, there are special occasions, uh, we do dress like that. Thank you so much for coming here, and thank you all for listening so patiently to her. I think if we get more women into the science and maths, I think that will be, uh, you know, the best thing to happen to the Indian education system. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you so much, Nandini, for speaking to us and coming today. I request Pooja Garg of PCJ to kindly come on stage and give a small token of appreciation to our guest.